How you guys doing here? This is me, John Dole, right here in Tokyo, Japan. It's a little late right now, so when you see this video, God knows what I'll be doing. But uh, what we want to get into here a little bit is something that comes up in conversation more often than you would think, and to be completely honest, something that many people are not comfortable discussing, and people get rather upset about it. But the question still remains, where is the leftist movement in the first world in the 21st century? Now, we can point and say, oh, well, we have liberals. Liberals are not leftists by any stretch of the imagination. Is it something I'm going to bring up here? But we want to focus. Where is the leftist movement in the first world in the 21st century? Now, I'm going to put up a Tumblr blog on the uh, GLR Tumblr blog page talking about this in a bit more detail. But I want to put a video to this as well. All right. Now, I can point to three factors within the leftist movement that's caused this, okay? And we'll get into how that <coughs> perpetuates to the larger situation. But I can point to three factors, all right? Let's say liberalism, anarchy, all right? And the third one, which is probably one of the most important, is capitalism after the USSR, all right? Now, let's get into our first one, liberals, all right? Now, in the West, especially in the first world, you have a lot of, lot of liberals claiming to be carrying the torch of the leftist movement. Well, that would be extremely incorrect, because often, liberals do not actually challenge the capitalist class. That's not part of the liberal agenda at all. What they do is to take quite often a more of a social democrat perspective with a lot of liberals. It's the belief that if the worker class applies equal pressure on the political class as the capitalist class does, that pressure will create a break in contradiction and progress progression happens. But that's an extreme fallacy. All right. Concessions really change nothing. What concessions do is get the capitalist class to shut you up. All right? The capitalists will give up a few things from time to time, but always remember, there's a catch-22 to anything. And often liberals do not take that into consideration with their, cons their willingness to take concessions at any opportunity. So the liberals have done a lot of damage to the leftist movement in the first world with their unwillingness to carry out things to the full completion. They'll go right up to the point, you know, right up to the point where like, yeah, yeah, right there, right there, right there, and then boop, they back off at the last minute and take, take some type of concession. They do this all the time. So yeah, the liberals are a huge problem. Now, second point, and this one's a little controversial here, anarchist. Yeah, anarchists have done a lot of damage to the leftist movement. Now, I know how you want to scream and shout and go off on me for that one, but let me explain it, okay? Now, anarchists are very, very useful and effective towards pushing towards the goals of the leftist movement. But ultimately, what anarchists do to damage the leftist movement or leftist ideology is that they decentralize. Now, decentralization is not a bad thing in and of itself, but to the extreme the anarchists take it, it actually damages us. Because they're following this idea that we can go directly from capitalism all the way over to some form of um, anarchy or even communism. Now, me, myself, I am pushing for the eventual day that we do achieve communism. But I'm also smart enough to rely on Marx and rely on dialectical, dialectical materialism 
Now, what that tells me <laughs> by following such things is that once you break down capitalism and you smash the capitalist state, there's going to be an extreme power vacuum. And there's going to be many different groups playing off each other. And they're all going to have different agendas. And to say that if you just completely destroy the capitalist class, that suddenly we're all going to be like all overjoyed with happiness and we're all going to live in peace and harmony. No, no, no. That's utopianism, and that's not going to work. And, you know, every time that the leftists, I've seen the first world, will try to organize themselves and try to get a strong ideology behind what they're trying to do, you'll see anarchists come around and, bar my English here, but fuck it up. Almost every time. And I've been involved in enough movements to see this happen. You see some smart, intelligent people who are good at organizing, good at getting things together, good at building up a movement to push towards our goals. And they'll start getting some attention. And before you know it, because of that attention, it'll attract these anarchists who come in, the Black Bloc and others. And they'll try to, well, then the people will try to go out and do events. And these anarchists will just start smashing shit and acting crazy and screw everything up and make things twice as hard. You see, they're not tactical. I've noticed that anarchists tend not to be tactical. The only goal is to smash and destroy everything they get in front of them. Now that, the intent may be different, but that's what me as a communist sees. So yeah, anarchists have done a lot of damage to everything we're trying to do here. The third group, the third thing, third factor, and probably the most important, is the idea of capitalism after the fall of the USSR. Now, while we had the USSR, which was a very special thing, and we should never forget that leftists were able to accomplish that, but while we had that, there was an equal push against capitalism. There was an alternative system that we, you know, you didn't have to consign yourself to a life of capitalism. There were options for you. And that gave the leftists in the first world a lot of momentum and a lot of power because of the USSR, just simply because USSR existed and because there was that push against capitalism, that, can, that in never any battle. It gave the leftists, again, a lot of influence, a lot of power. But when that went away, oh boy, our capitalist masters had a fucking field day. And they've continued to have a fucking field day. The reason why, because after the USSR, the leftist movement rode over and said, oh, well, it's over now. No. It's not over now. In fact, now more than ever, we need communists to stand up. We need true leftists to stand up. And despite what I've said, we also need the anarchists to stand up. But we must pull together. We must understand that we cannot smash and destroy everything. We cannot say screw it all. That we must educate ourselves and we must be very tactical. And you know, we, must, we must look for opportunities to strike while the iron is hot. Instead of simply smashing, things shit, up, smashing shit up on the street and acting like we've done something, we haven't. So that's what I want to speak on this. Bring this up. Leave comments in the comment box below. Any hate mail you wish to send, please do. I enjoy those as well. And if you'd wish to um, do a video response to this, this idea, I'd be very happy to see that and hear your thoughts as well. So if it's the first time you've seen any videos done by me, please subscribe to the channel, Ghost Layers Report. We'll put a link through here somewhere, so you can click on there and subscribe. So until next time, this is me, John Dole, here in Tokyo, checking out.